Today on Judge Faith, stolen blankets and a broken heart. It was her guest that stole my blankets. That blanket, I still miss it to this day. That's why when I found out about that, I didn't let nobody else come in and visit me. I feel a lot safer now. Thank you. You're making me blush, Mr. Castellano. You can call me Daniel. <laughs> And later, New Yorkers battle over a neutral bullet. And I said, I ordered neutral bullet. What happened to it? And they said, Oh, we delivered it to you. I said, Where did you deliver it to? Your Honor, I could have been framed. Anyone could have signed that. Oh, you think the FedEx is framing you? Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Daniel Castilleja says a defendant's friend stole his blankets from the laundry room of their apartment complex. He's suing for the cost of stolen property. He's accompanied in court today by Michael West. Defendant Deborah Urias says she doesn't owe any money because she didn't steal Daniel's blankets and she wants him to stop harassing her about them. All rise, court is in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, the litigants have been sworn in. This is the case of Castilleja versus Urias. Thank you, Juan. Daniel Castilleja? Yes. You are suing the defendant, Deborah Urias? Yes. For $900 for the value of stolen property? Yes. On April 27, you say you were doing laundry. Yes. And you were... And I woke up in a bad day already because I had to step in a rat. Okay. Okay? So I had to do my own laundry, wash my two beautiful blankets that I miss. And one of them reminds me of my grandmother. And I get there to the laundromat, and there's this fake blonde lady who works there, you know, fake blonde maintenance lady. We start yapping and yapping and yapping. And you push your blankets in the dryer? In the washer. Okay. And then we saw on far left, far right of my eye, I see this lady or this thing taking off some raccoon off her hair, of her head, and throwing it in the dryer to dry it, and she's like, like that, I'm like, okay, whatever, to each her own. So after that, we yap yap for a little bit, and then I left my blankets there washing, thinking they were gonna be safe, but of course, I found out there's another rat living in the building. Which is you. So what happened, ma'am? I got approached by the manager saying that uh, one of my people that came to visit me we had gone down to wash her clothes and my clothes. And this is a community laundry room? Know. Yes, yes. How many, uh, how many got approximately, 14 floors. Approximately how many apartments are in this building? Oh my goodness, they're 14 floors. 14 floors, oh this she is a huge apartment count. complex. Oh, yes. And you yes. all share a laundry room? Right, they have signs that don't leave your laundry. Because someone might steal them? Yeah, because that, that happened, happened to me too the first time. Okay, and that a happened in this, listen, yeah. when I'm talking, you're not speaking over me. I apologize, John. So what happens? The manager comes to you and tells you what? He said he has her on video. Taking so his, I, his blankets yeah, out of the so dryer. I went and told her, and she's like, yeah, I, I go, I gotta take them back. She goes, well, after I wash them. So she admits she stole the blankets? Yeah, she did. So, okay. um, so why are we here? <laughs> because he's saying I did it, and I was nowhere yeah, there. If he has, prove it. Just because she is her guest, that does not make her responsible for the independent criminal acts of another person mm -hmm. when that person visits them. She's not the one responsible. No, Your Honor, Your Honor, may I say something? Mm -hmm. May I say something? Mm -hmm. I made a police report on the apartment complex that I live in with this rat. Don't, uh, you can't call names in my courtroom, Okay, sir. with this person. Uh, Whatever guests you let in, it's your responsibility that whatever happens, happens. It falls on you, okay? And, 
It was her guest that stole my blankets that are full of bed bugs probably by now. It's her responsibility. Uh, did you bring a witness? What do you want to say, sir? This is my friend Michael. Hi. What did you um, witness, sir? I was going to check on the dryers, and I saw the em them emptying out the dryers with the blankets. Who's them? It's two ladies, mm -hmm. uh, her and her friend, I guess, that was there. Mm -hmm. But I've seen that other lady there before um, stealing laundry. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you've seen this woman steal laundry before, why in the world would you ever leave your laundry unattended in the laundry room? Because it's your well, place she didn't of living. Know that you know, you're supposed to feel comfortable and safe. I totally agree with that. But it. now you know and that someone steals laundry in your we building. We have cameras for that. And, it's on and camera. we caught them on camera. I understand and that, she's sir. she's responsible I, for I that. I understand well, that. But my that. question to you is, bring if you videos, know, Gerard. do you hear me speaking? Do you hear me speaking? Yes, ma'am. OK, do you understand the words that are coming out of my I'm mouth? I need you to be quiet. And you need to tell your little thieving cousin or sister-in-law, whoever she is, to stop taking people's duvet covers. Who steals duvets? Exactly. Especially beautiful ones like mine. It's ridiculous. You know your ex-sister-in-law has a problem. She steals laundry. She stole a lot of stuff from me. That's why we, we're why not Why do you talking. let her in the building no, and she's downstairs? But you let her she's in the building. She's downstairs right. doing, doing laundry. Right. You know full well that she has sticky fingers. No, at that time, I didn't know. I hadn't seen her over 25 years. You know she steals from people, and in the past, she's stolen from you. Actually, I would say that you are negligent. No. I would say that you are I negligent. Think. Thank you. Because you know, you say, you say that this no, woman, I... no, no, no. No, Miss Urias, because you say this woman has stolen from you in the past. No. And she's also stolen from other people in, in this building. I believe this witness, when he said he's seen her steal before. That's yeah. why when I found out about that, I didn't let nobody else come in and visit me. Right. Coming up, it's getting hot in here. One, please. It's one blank, one duvet? It's two blankets. Okay. Thank you, Juan. Thank you. Oh, you called me? <laughs> he called me over. He called me over. <laughs> and later, neighbors accused of jacking a neutral bullet. It does say that the person that signed for the package in apartment 14A. What's your apartment number? 14A. One is like, this does not take a lot of investigation to see what happened here. <laughs> Plaintiff Daniel Castilleja says Deborah's friend stole his blankets from their laundry room. He's suing for the cost of stolen property. Defendant Deborah Urias says she doesn't owe any money because she didn't steal Daniel's blankets. Let me see proof of, of the value of these blankets, sir. These are two blankets. One, please. It's one blank, one duvet? It's two blankets. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Juan. Thank you. Oh, you called me? He called me over. He called me over. <laughs> I am dead. I, I am done. I am done. I feel a lot I'm safer done. now. Okay. I feel a lot safer now. Thank you. You're suing for $270 in emotional distress? Yes, because... This is a serious matter. My wool blanket that was stolen reminded me of my grandmother's. She had one just like it, and I just bought it. I still miss it to this day. I cry, I just cry sometimes, out of nowhere. He doesn't have anyone in his life, and so he's but always, I have, his pillows and blankets and everything mean a lot to him. Yes. Thank you, Juan. <laughs> uh, okay. You're making me blush, Mr. Castellano. Castillas, you're making me blush. Can you call me Danny? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Am I missing something? Here's what we're going to do. So the... Sir, is that the blanket that was stolen out of the laundry room on the day in question? Oh. What's the matter? I don't know if you can handle <gasps> seeing this, but that's a photo. Oh. <laughs> 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 okay, let me stop. 
Okay. <laughs> I can't look at it. You can't look at it. <laughs> it's okay. It's Why are y'all laughing? Is this a personal matter? It's a great shade of green. It really was. She's crying too. One. Oh, okay. Give me a tissue. One second. Okay. It's okay. It's okay, Miss Faith. I'm getting over it. Okay, I'm gonna rule now. Based on the evidence in this case and everything I've heard, initially, the law is very clear that people are not responsible no, for not. the independent criminal acts of a third party. But in this case, based on the evidence before me, ma'am, you were completely negligent in allowing this woman to be a guest in this apartment building and allow her to go down to the laundry room unsupervised. You have now her information to follow up with a police report, and I think you should, because that's how you deter people from committing future crimes when you actually go forward and press charges. And you say this means a lot to you, yes. so I encourage you to do that. Head However, civilly, I am going to hold you partially responsible for <laughs> due to your negligence in this case. I'm not going to order her to pay for the sham. <gasps> I am going to order a partial judgment in this case in the amount of $438, judgment for the plaintiff. I want my sham. I don't know why she didn't give me the sham for that rat. The sham was part of the whole thing. Now I'm hurt even more. I discharged her from my house and didn't let nobody come over because you can never trust nobody. Uh, not even your mate. Plaintiff Darlene Bishop says she ordered two Nutribullets online, but they were mistakenly delivered to the defendant's apartment, and she kept them. She's suing for the value of her blenders and related items. Defendant Shantae Nickerson says she doesn't know because she was at work when the delivery supposedly arrived, and she didn't sign for the Nutribullets. She's accompanied in court today by Daylise Moore. Darlene Bishop? Yes. You were suing the defendant Shantae Nickerson? Yes for $200 for the value of two blenders you say she owes you for? Yes. Okay, and you have a witness with you, ma'am? Yes, I do. Are you Daylise Moore? Yes, I am. Okay, we'll start with you, Ms. Bishop. Tell me what's going on here. Okay, Your Honor, I have lived in the um, housing development that I'm in for 12 years. My mother was there for 40 years. I came back the last 12 years to take care of her. Where is this located, in the Bronx? In the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And um, the floor that I live on, on the 14th floor, is like a neighborhood, a family. We all know each other. I watched the kids grow up, you know, so we all were like very close knit. When Shantae came to live in the building, she's diagonal from me. Yes, I, I When was that? About a year ago. She moved onto your floor? Right, she's diagonal from my apartment, mm -hmm. okay? When she came, I welcomed her, like, you know, you welcome your neighbors, you know? As the time went on, um, she would come over and borrow stuff every once in a while. Like and what? I, eggs, you know, and I, I would give it to her. It's not a problem because, you know, she has a child, so I don't want to see anybody go hungry. So, yeah, I would give her stuff. Did you go over there and ask her for flour, sugar occasionally? Yes, as occasionally a neighbor? I have. And, and what kind of neighbor was she? Um, she was a down-to-earth neighbor. She was very nice. Mm -hmm. A nice okay, neighbor. Okay, look at me. Yes. <laughs> What's the relationship between the two of you? Yeah, she's my roommate. Okay, R roommate. All right. Okay. I was watching TV because of my health problems, and I saw the advertisement for the Nutribullet with the BOGO. You get one, get one free. The oh, buy free. one, get one, one free. free. Yeah, Got it. BOGO. So the Nutribullet people said to me when I ordered it, it would take anywhere from 10 days to two weeks to get this. So I said, OK, and I waited. During that time, I'm in and out the doctor's office, and I wasn't really thinking about it. And I came home. I said, oh, wait a minute. What happened to my Nutribullet? Because now this is like three weeks, almost a month. OK. So I called them up, and I said, I ordered Nutribullet. What happened to it? And they said, oh, we delivered it to you. Mm. And I said, excuse me? I never got it. So I called FedEx, and they said, oh, yeah, we did deliver it. And I said, you delivered it? I said, where did you deliver it to? Somebody signed it, C. Nickerson. And I went. Who is that? You know, because I didn't me. know her last name. So what happened? Did you sign for the neutral bullet? No, I did not. I, at the time when you, when she had told me that 
the um, package was being delivered, I was not in my apartment. I was at work at the time, but my witness was there. Okay. She you was were at home work. that day? Yeah, nobody knocked on the door for no package. It does say that the C. person that signed for the package, it was signed by C. Nickerson in and apartment 14 14A. And, and I was not what, What's your apartment number? 14A, and I was at work at the time. <laughs> I was not around at the time <laughs> of the incident. One is like, this does not take a lot off? of investigation to see what happened here. <laughs> <laughs> According to FedEx, the driver made an indirect delivery where your shipment was signed for by C. Nickerson. Yeah, well, um, Your Honor, I could have been framed. Anyone could have signed that. Oh, you think that FedEx is framing you? I, mean, I wasn't well, around that Because they don't want to be responsible for the neutral bullet? I was at work and my witness was in the apartment at the time. Wow. People can't even make kale smoothies anymore without people trying to <laughs> get, get the neutral bullets. <laughs> So when I call them... A woman them, has diabetes, she's trying to get better, get healthy, and somebody stole her Nutribullet. And it wasn't me, Your Honor. <laughs> and we live in a bad neighborhood. Have the two of you been juicing? <laughs> no, not at all. I didn't even know what the Nutribullet was. <laughs> Coming up on Judge Faith, should the neighbors pay for the Nutribullets? If anyone is out of Nutribullets, it's actually Nutribullet. They should be the proper ones yeah. pursuing a claim against, against me. Against you. Yeah, you're right. Plaintiff Darlene Bishop says Shante stole her neutral bullets. She's suing for the value of her blenders and related items. Defendant Shante Nickerson says she doesn't owe because she didn't sign for the neutral bullets. Once you made the complaint to Nutribullet on October 7th, they sent you the very next day, they reshipped the order to you and sent you two Nutribullets. Right. And so that... if anyone is out of Nutribullets, it's actually Nutribullet. Yeah. And so they should be, they, would, they should be the proper ones yeah. pursuing a claim against, against me. Well, against you. Yeah, you're right. Okay, Your Honor. So, so... <laughs> Your Honor. So, what's the issue here? Okay, when I ordered the Nutribullet, they started taking it out of my checking account. Mm -hmm. And so, for two payments, that came out of my checking account, and I stopped the payments after that because I said, I'm not getting product, but you're taking money out Monthly of my... Monthly payments? Right. Okay, so I'm... here's the issue. You ordered this on September 9th. You didn't realize until October 7th that you didn't have the Nutribullets. Right. They sent you the very next day, October 8th, two new Nutribullets, the which, very next day. Which didn't come, I think you have it there, until the 21st, which went to another neighbor who called me the next day and said, I got this package for you. Now... N nonetheless... You got the neutral bullets in October, so you should have been paying in October. Right. So I, I think that what you're saying is you your account had to go to collections and you had to pay a certain fee because the account went to collections, right. but that really isn't their fault. But I the, the no, people I that isn't Nutribullet. the people who took the neutral bullets' fault. Well, I called Nutribullet. No, you I understand? called Nutribullet. So here's no, I, I've heard enough. This is what happened. I, I have a very clear understanding of what happened. Coming up. Judge Faith rules. And now, Judge Faith rules. This is more of a criminal case for you versus a civil case because stealing someone's mail is a serious offense. And if you make a report and you have enough evidence, I think you have sufficient evidence here, I think there will be a criminal investigation. But civilly, that lawsuit belongs to Neutral Bullet. Judgment in this case is for the defendant. I feel that Judge Faith ruling was the right ruling because I didn't really have anything to do with the signing of the neutral bullet. I didn't even know what the neutral bullet was. I mean, you know, they're my neighbors and I see them, but don't come to my house and ask me for anything. And I'm just, I'm at a point that it's discord on our floor now because of this. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.